Yes, ma'am. All right. Uh, Thari, if you had some doubts also, no? I was informed that you're having certain doubts. Uh, I'll take it uh, in the class itself. Do one thing. Just share your doubts with me on WhatsApp. You already have my number. Yes, ma'am. So first we'll do uh, some questions of alternating current we'll practice today. Some questions were left from the last class, So it could be like a revision class of AC, but actually these are extensions only, extensions of what we have studied. Uh, tomorrow you people won't be having your physics class. Directly now from next Saturday, we'll start with the second book, Optics. All right, because you people are having your exams these times. So that's when I didn't start with Optics. EMVs was completed last week and today also I didn't start with optics. We'll complete, we'll start it properly the next week because ray optics is a lesson which is very important and ray optics is one such lesson that holds the maximum amount of weightage from your second book. And if that is missed, then nothing is left in second book. Atoms, nuclei, dual nature, semiconductors, even wave, all these are very short, short lessons which will be completed very fast. But ray optics will take time. See, did you people notice in the first book also, electrostatics took such a long time entire March, April went for just electric charges in field. Then May, we were just uh, studying electric potential and capacitance like this. Then current electric electricity took such a long time. Magnetic effects of electric current chapter fourth took such a long time. So all these lessons were uh, which uh, were to be done in detail and we did it, right? But I informed you already that fifth, sixth, seventh, eight, all these are very short lessons. See, EM waves complete was completed in such a short span. EMI is a very short lesson. Chapter fifth is all theory part, right? Even alternating current is not a very difficult and a huge lesson. It's just that you have to remember certain things over there. It's not very lengthy. So like this, this first book holds you no know, four very lengthy, important core lessons. You have ray optics as a very lengthy core lesson of the second book. So that's why ray optics I want to discuss in detail. And therefore, we'll just not start it today. So at least you people are free a bit with your exams. By the next week, a lot of time will be gone. So I'll start with ray optics directly. Tomorrow, you people need not come. Tomorrow, it's an off for you people. If you want to have a class, you can let me know I'm there. But I think you just need to prepare for your exams. So that would be better. And we'll start directly with optics. Uh, so some question, three questions, minimum three to four questions were left. Then I'll take Tariq's doubt also. And if other student also has any doubt, please WhatsApp me. So that in today's class, no, we have an extra class today. So it would be clear. All right, Austin, Humamadiya, if any of you from your question papers or anywhere, if you people have doubts, you can share it. Meanwhile, first write down this question. Then I'll discuss this. Three questions consecutively we'll do. Then uh, I'll discuss the doubts also. So just share the doubts on WhatsApp. Either you can share it on the group or if you want, you can share it on my number also. Write down this question. Say, share your answers with me in the chat column. Two minutes, three minutes time is enough. Then we'll discuss it. Yes, yes, Madhya. Displacement current we did, and uh, after the uh, dis after displacement current, before the class ended, we discussed the table which I shared with you all, electromagnetic spectrum table. So EM waves was completed in the last class. Displacement current, yes, we did it. After that, we did electromagnetic spectrum. I asked you all to revise it also and learn frequencies, just powers of ten and all. You should remember because that will come in your exam.
See, this question says that calculate the current drawn by the primary of a transformer, which steps down 200 volt to 20 volt. So this is a step down trans transformer. So higher voltage, lower voltage. Fine. This is E2. This is E1. To uh, operate a device of resistance 20 ohms, assume the efficiency of the transformer to be 80%. Efficiency also I had mentioned. See, E2, this is mentioned as 200 volt E1 from, right? This is 200 volts to 20 volts. So 20 volts is there. Uh, rest, uh, resistance to operate a device of resistance. If this is saying, no, step down trans transformer is doing the same to operate a device. It means this is R2 is already given to us as 20 ohms. Efficiency, I told you, no, we have discussed efficiency. See, E2 you have, R2 you have. You can calculate I2. See, V is equal to IR. I will be equal to V divided by R. So I2 will be equal to 200 E2 divided by R2. So that is 10 amperes. Fine. This is 10 amperes. Now, see, uh, if we write down about efficiency, efficiency is equal to E2 I2. Remember power output by power input. This is divided by E1 I1. All right. So see efficiency I1 we do not. So how can we calculate if efficiency is given as 80%. So we do not need to write in 80 uh, in percentage this will become 80 by 100 what is e2 e2 is 200 what is i2 i2 is 10 what is e1 e1 is 20 what is i1 this you need to calculate all right when you will calculate this will come out to be i think 0 0.125 amperes because see uh, this 2 2 will be cancelled here you will have 10 this 0 yeah, thousand bytes, zero point one two five. Just check the solution also if it's correct or not. Let me write it down.
Yes, class answers. A transformer of 100% efficiency has 200 turns in the primary and 4,000 turns in the secondary. It is connected to a 200 volt AC mains and the secondary feeds to a 100,000 resistance. All right. Uh, calculate the output potential difference per turn and the power delivered to the load. See what all data we have. N1. How many number of turns are there? 200. Yes. What is N2? Austin. Yes, Austin. What is that? 40,000. Number of turns in the secondary. This is 40,000. See, N1, N2. Similarly, E1 is given to us. It is given as 200. This is given as 200 volts. The resistance uh, is how much? Resistance is given as 1000 kilo ohm. 100 kilo ohms. 100 kilo ohms means I should multiply it with 1000. K means 1000. So this becomes 10 to the power 5 ohms. Right? 10 to the power 5. Now, if it is E2 by E1, this should be equal to, yes, homam, answer, in terms of number of turns. E2 by E1 is equal to? Hmm, homam. E2 by E1, this is equal to? With respect to number of turns, I'm asking. Madhiha. Yes, ma'am. Uh, e2 by E1 is equal to what? In terms of number of turns, see N1 is there, N2 is there, E2 and E1. These four quantities are here. So here I'm asking E2 by E1 is equal to what? N into I1. By How much, Madhya? Okay. N into I1 by I2 like that? Uh, see, see, not, not current. See, okay, I'll just tell you. Uh, yes, Austin, Austin, you are right. See, E2 by E1 is equal to N2 by N1 or N1 by N2, Madhya? N1 by N2? Or N2 by N1, Madhya. It's N1 by N2. See, whenever we have, Austin's answer is right. Whenever you are having voltage and you have to write number of turns, they will be similar. If this is secondary, here also you will have secondary, N2 by N1. And when it comes to current, that becomes I1 by I2. Only current is opposite. Please remember this relation. All your questions of transformers will be solved. Now it's clear, Madhya, Humam? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Now, uh, see, yes, so let us find E2. So E2 will be equal to N2 by N1 into E1, which is equal to 40,000 by 200 into 200. So if E1 and N2, N1 both are same, this will be almost equal to back to 40,000 volt. Now output potential difference per turn. See, output potential difference per turn. It means potential difference per unit turn. This is what is meant by the question. Nothing else. Output potential difference per turn mean output potential difference that is secondary one per turn of that. If had it been input potential difference, we would have used E1 by N1. Fine. So what is E2? 40,000 N2 is 40,000. Answer is 1 volt per turn. Clear? Now, one more thing the question is asking. 
calculate our output potential difference per turn and power delivered to the load. See, when we are calculating power delivered to the load, when it is power delivered to the load, this is E2 into I2. Fine, this is E2 into I2. Now, here we have resistance. Information of current is not given. So instead of using the formula, no, P is equal to VI, we can use the formula P is equal to V square by R because information about current we do not have. So at least we can use E2 square by R2. So that will be equal to 40,000 whole square divided by 10 to the power 5. So this should be around just check the answer, whatever it is, 16 point something this would be. Just check it. So this is your answer. This much exactly is the power delivered. What? This is how you have to solve the lengthy questions. But class, please remember this relation. This relation is very important for solving all the questions of this. Write this down. One question we'll discuss. Then Tarif, I'll come to your doubts. Uh, six questions are, no? I think. I have received your questions, I'll share. Okay, some more also use. Fine. I'll discuss after this. One more question we'll discuss, then Tariq, your questions.
See, this question says that a coil of resistance 300 ohms and inductance 1 Henry is connected across an alternating voltage of frequency 300 by 2 pi hertz. You have to calculate the phase difference between voltage and the current. See, resistance is given as 300. Then inductance. This is given as 1 Henry. Then frequency is given as 300 by 2 pi hertz. Now see, tan phi, tan phi is what? Tan phi will be, this is which type of circuit? See, resistor is connected and inductor is connected. There is no mention of capacitor. So this is LR circuit, right? This This is an LR circuit. So tan phi is equal to XL divided by R. What is the formula of XL in terms of frequency? Harif, you tell me. Formula of XL in terms of frequency. Yes, Harif. Yes, formula of XL, inductive reactance. Austin is right. Yes, sir. If no answer, 2 pi mu L. C, correct Austin. This is equal to omega L. Omega L divided by resistance. Now further omega can be written as 2 pi mu into inductance divided by the resistance. So 2 pi frequency is 300 by 2 pi. Inductance L is 1 and R is 300. So see, 2 pi, 2 pi will be cancelled. 300, 300 will be cancelled. Yes, Homam, what should be the answer now? If tan phi is coming 1, what is the value of phi, Homam? Tan theta, when your tan theta is 1. Correct, Madhya. Yes. Yes, very good. 45. So, the phase angle, this is 45 degrees. Write it down, then we will discuss the questions which Tari has. Uh, Austin minus y minus from impedance triangle even if you calculate y minus the formula is x c minus x one by r right and x c is zero here. Yeah. See, this is from impedance triangle only. You're right. See, uh, when we were discussing phasors, I think before LC circuit that time i think i have discussed this ac circuit having only resistor this is only capacitor After LCR circuits, then we discuss those LR circuit and RC circuits.
see tan phi is equal to xl by r this formula i, I have used sorry uh, austin Okay. See, if we are using the impedance triangle also, using impedance triangle only we have obtained this E naught. E naught was the one. No, here we have XL R. This is not. This is this impedance triangle is different because you do not have capacitance. This was series LC. Uh, this was series LR circuit. So when you will apply the uh, Pythagoras theorem, E naught square will be equal to V R square plus V L square. So current square will be taken common. You will be left with R square plus XL square, right? This triangle we are talking about. So when you will take cos phi, that will be R is R by Z. I told you this is common for all. For the specifically LR circuit, you have XL minus R. Had this been uh, LCR circuit, then XL minus XC or XC minus XC would have been written. Clear, Austin? Yes.
done till here uh, see this was one of the questions on tari which you had sent now see four point charges q a so this is a b c d so this is mm -hmm. two micro coulomb this is minus mm -hmm. five micro coulomb this is two micro coulomb this is minus five micro coulomb now the separation between these you have to now uh, see uh, they are separated the side of the square is 10 cm here also so all these sides are 10 cm so see tari what is the force on a charge of 1 coulomb which is placed at the center of square even whatever be the value of the charge this is here the charge that is kept here this is 1 coulomb now see this is uh this is minus 5 this is minus 5 this is plus 2 this is plus 2 when we will be calculating the force this is positive this is negative this will be moved towards the charge because of forces of attraction this will also be moved towards the charge because of forces of attraction so this is f b this is f d fine now see when we are taking their magnet magnitude fb and fc if when you apply coulomb's law that becomes k q1 is 5 micro coulomb second is 1 micro coulomb divided by separation see this separation you can calculate this will be 5 root 2 this entire diagonal ad not ad ac ac and bd they'll be equal to 10 root 2 because see this is 10 10 so under root 10 square plus 10 square so 2 into 10 square so root 2 will be left 10 will be taken out from when we are taking their half that is ao which is equal to ob is equal to oc is equal to od this will be half of this so that will become 5 root 2 so this becomes 5 root 2 whole square we are just applying coulomb's law k q1 q2 by r square coulomb's law yeah, right now come to this this will this is also positive this is positive so this is repelled by this that is force due to c this is also repelled because both are now positive this is also positive this is also positive this is f a when we are calculating the magnitude f a is equal to f c k what is the charge charge is 2 micro coulomb here the charge is 1 micro coulomb and separation still separation is still 5 root 2 whole square now look can you see both the magnitudes are equal when you will calculate the net force due to this see fc minus fa when you will do since they are equal they'll cancel each other and fd and fb both are equal they'll also cancel each other because the magnitude is same see here one micro coulomb here both are same so fa will cancel fc fb will cancel fc so this uh, sorry f a will cancel f c f b will cancel f d so in total net force will be equal to zero whether this is kept at the center of a sphere or any other figure clear tari note it down rest of the questions i'll discuss first write it down
what statement should we write as the reason they are cancelled? No, you will not, not write any statement. See, you will show FB is equal to this. You will show FD is equal to this. Uh, all right. Separately, you will write. I have written like this. In your board exam, you will not write it like FB is equal to FD directly. No. You will first write FB's magnitude. You will calculate and show. Then you will take out FB's magnitude. FB, FD. Then you, you will subtract them. Net uh, re uh, resultant force across BD diagonal like this you will write. Then that you will show FB minus FD. They are getting cancelled. So FB minus FD is equal to 0. Fine. Then you will show what is FA. This will come equal to FC. Then magnitude of FC you will calculate. You will show this is equal to this. Right. Then you will take out the net resultant force across diagonal AC. When you will subtract, that will come out to be zero. When then finally you will take net force across the entire center. So that is sum of all the forces. Right. That is FB minus FD. This force plus this force. So you will write directly F net is equal to zero because all the forces are cancelling each other. This is how you have to properly write in the exam. See, this question by looking at the figure only, you could conclude the fact that this was zero. Right? You are not appearing, when you are not, when you are appearing for your entrances, that is a different thing. When you are appearing for the board exams, that's a separate thing. Here, by looking, you can directly calculate. Magnitude is this. Both the forces are pulling each other. They are cancelling. But when you are writing it for the purpose of your board exams, you have to mention every point. Fine? You have to mention that uh, resultant force is zero and you have to show why the resultant force is zero. Clear, Austin? Okay, now let us discuss. I hope you people have written the above one. If anyone is writing, please stop. See, it says that two insulated charged copper spheres A and B have their centers separated by a distance of 50 centimeters. What is the mutual force of electrostatic repulsion if the charge on each is 6.5 into 10 to the power minus 7 coulomb? The radii of A and B are negligible compared to the distance of separation. Okay, second part says, what is the force of repulsion if each sphere is charged? Charge double the above amount. So first we have to calculate the force. And then the distance between them is half. See, what is QA? This is 6.5 into 10 to the power minus 7. It is saying each. So QB is also 6.5 into 10 to the power minus 7 of coulombs. Fine. What is the distance between the spheres that is given? Radius, this is between the spheres, this is uh, 50 centimeter. So convert it into meters, that becomes half of meter, 0.5. Use your Coulomb's law for the calculation. F is equal to K, Q A into Q B divided by R square. Fine. What is the value of K? 9 into 10 to the power 9. Charge on A, 6.5 into 10 to the power minus 7. Charge on B, 6.5 into 10 to the power minus 7. Radius square, this is 0 0.5 whole square. So whatever force comes, that is the answer of the first part. Mutual force of attraction and repulsion. So electrostatic repulsion is already there because both the charges are positive. Uh, let me see what is the answer for this. It's 1. 0.52 into 10 to the power minus 2. 
this will come when you will calculate this second part says what is the force of repulsion if each sphere is charged the double amount and the distance between them is half now see when you are doubling the charge the charge on each sphere when you are calculating uh, this is getting doubled so 6.5 plus 6.5 so 13 so 1.3 right so this is the a part for the second part, second part is also not difficult. See, QA, which is equal to QB. This is 1.3 into 10 to the power minus 6 now. And if radius is half, so instead of 0.5 meter, you will be using 0 0.25 meters. That's it. And the same formula. Now, apply Coulomb's law, K. Let's say this is QA dash R dash. So this becomes QA dash into QB dash by r dash this is the way you can calculate write it down calculate let me know what is the answer of second part you people are getting and those who do not have the questions first write down the question and then that's why i'm sharing the question also so that you people have the question with you See, now the next question. This says an oil drop of 12 excess electrons. This is held stationary under a constant electric field, 2.55 into 10 to the power 4 Newton per coulomb. 
in Millikan's oil drop experiment. Okay. So density is given as 1.26 gram per centimeter cube. We have to find out radius of the drop. G and E are already mentioned. C, in Millikan the oil drop experiment, whenever this experiment comes, always remember, he equated the electric force with the gravitational force. This was an experiment which he conducted. So everywhere you will find this. To estimate the amount of electrons, he did certain experiment using an oil drop. So this is always fixed in that. Force is equal to this. Now, what is force equal to in terms of electric field? Right now we have electric fields information. So we will not use Coulomb's law directly. We'll use Q into E. And the gravitational, this is electric force. Gravitational force is equal to mg. So QE is equal to mg. This is a very easy question. Look, when we have to find out uh, the net electric field, elect we have to find out radius. Now, in order to bring up the radius, uh, see, charge is equal to what? Q is equal to NE using uh, integral uh, quantization of charges. This is from quantization of charges. So this becomes NE into E into mg. Now, mass is equal to what? Density is equal to mass by volume. So, mass is equal to density into volume. Now, volume of a sphere. Volume of a sphere is equal to 4 by 3 pi r cube. See, we have introduced radius now. So, this is the value of mass. Put it there. N e into e is equal to rho 4 pi r cube. 4 by 3 pi r cube mg. Now see, number of every data is present. Right? We have to find out r cube. Number of electrons are given 12. Electronic charge is 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19. How much electric field was given? 2.55, no? 2.55 into 10 to the power 4. This is 2.55 into 10 to the power 4. Density is 1.26. 4 by 3 constant pi, you know. Radius, you have to find out. Not mg now, only g. Mass, we have substituted. This is mass into g. So, g is 9.8. Now, you can calculate value of r from here. Clear, Thari? If this question is clear? Yes or no? Yes. Okay. Okay, write it down. Other questions, edge. This is how you have to go. Whenever you have Millikan's experiment, always go by this.
Okay, so next question says that suppose that the particle in above question is an electron. This is a consecutive question. 13 above question means 14. Please uh, send 14th question. Velocity is given. Electric field is given. Separation is given. Where will it strike? See, we need the charge. Charge is, let's see if without the above question, whatever is written, we'll be able to do that. Uh, velocity is given as 2 into 10 to the power 6 meter per second. Charge is 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19. Mass is 9.1 into 10 to the power minus 31 kg. Velocity across x-axis is this. Distance is given as 0. 5 centimeters. So that becomes 0 0.005 meters. Uh, when electron stri strikes the above plate at the, uh, when will the electron strike the upper plate? So this is a question from capacitors. See, this is uh, if S is equal to UT plus half AT square if we do. Initially, if this is zero, this becomes time is not given. So time for time, what we can do, separation between the plates is x and velocity is x. Time will be L by Vx. So this will become half. Acceleration will be QE by M. Look here, class. Yes, yes, this will be able, we'll be able to solve without it. Look here, Tarif and others also. Half is there. Acceleration is force by mass. And time is distance by speed, whole square. From this, we have to find out L only value, the distance that we have taken. Fine. So this becomes 2 into m vx L divided by Q E, right? Under root, this is equal to L. So 2 mass of electrons, see rest of the things you people can substitute. Instead of S, I'll write it as D because I have taken it as D. Clear that if, see, in this question, no, you have to find out the separation L at which it strikes, whatever upper plate is there. Just look at the question 14. Uh, there must be, uh, it must be given. So acceleration is, acceleration is force by mass. Forces charge into electric field by mass. So acceleration we have put. If separation wherever it strikes is L. Velocity is already given Vx. Time is equal to distance upon speed. So we have squared it. T squared. Initially it will be zero because no information regarding initial velocity is given. And separation is already given. So from here L you have to calculate. This you can calculate because rest of the data everything is mentioned. You will be able to calculate now Tari this question.
see this question says that two large thin metal plates are parallel and close to each other so both the plates are like this having surface charge density of opposite sign plus sigma minus sigma uh this type this question we have discussed tari this question not in the form of question but uh, i had discussed this see if we are taking the point outside due to positive plate electric field will be away, away. due to inner plate electric field will field will be towards it formula of one plate is sigma by 2 epsilon not right so for this it will become plus sigma by 2 epsilon not for this it will become minus sigma by 2 epsilon not right when we are including the direction when you are taking the magnitude simply use electric field is equal to sigma by 2 epsilon not for outside subtract for inward c this is away it will move here this is negative it will move towards it so add in this part similarly if you are taking uh, outer of the first plate outer of second plate b part for negative it will move towards for positive it will move away so here also you will subtract so answer is here answer here will be the same here you will add it so when you will add it sigma by 2 epsilon not uh plus sigma by 2 epsilon not that will become sigma by epsilon not simply this you will be able to manage see this is one plate this is one plate sigma is already given sigma is given as one uh, 17.0 into 10 to the power minus 22 2 you know epsilon not also you know permittivity is value for this you will subtract it will be zero see it will be zero sigma by 2 epsilon not sigma by 2 epsilon not both are same in magnitude they'll cancel here you will get zero similarly they'll cancel here you will get zero but only here it will be added so it will become sigma by epsilon not 2 and 2 will be cancelled so simply divide this with 8.85 so it should be around 1 point something you know 8 17 by 8 point something no so uh, 2 is 16 so uh, almost approximately the answer should be 2 into whatever is the power left uh, minus 12 so 10 minus 10 approximately the answer should come 2 into 10 to the power minus 10 this is not the exact answer this is i have just telling you write it down uh, and just check also once again tari this uh, these types i have discussed that you get questions in this manner See this question says that the sum of two point charges is seven microcoulomb. They repel each other with a force of one newton. When kept thirty centimeter apart in free space, you have to find out value of each charge. See, 
if sum of let's say uh, let's take one charge is x other charge is y so their sum is seven fine so let us say one charge is x so what is the value of y y's value is seven minus x so one charge is x second charge is seven minus x this is q1 this is q2 now what is the separation between the charges 30 centimeters which you have to convert 0 0.3 meters okay now you have you know the value of force also one newton so f is equal to k q1 q2 divided by r square so one is equal to 9 into 10 to the power 9 now what is q1 q1 is x what is q2 q2 is 7 minus x divided by r square is 0 0.3 whole square linear equation in one variable you just have to find out the value of x once you know x 7 minus x will give you q2 Uh, Tarif, you just stay. Time is already up. If you people want to stay, any one of you, you can stay for the rest of the questions. Otherwise, you people can leave. If you have doubts, you can let me know. Tarif, you stay. Uh, the other questions which are let, I'll discuss now. And tomorrow, you people do not have your class. See, Tariq, in this question, it says that three point charges are placed at the vertices of an equilateral triangle ABC as shown in the figure. Let me expand this. Now, uh, see, further it says that Uh, L is the side. So it's an equilateral triangle. L is the side. Okay, it's mentioned also. Obtain the expression and for the magnitude and resultant acting on the charge Q. See, this is negative charge. This is positive. This will be pulling it towards itself. Both are negative. This will be repelling it. So this is force on A due to B. This is force C, C A force C A and force B A. These are the forces. If this is an equilateral triangle, this means this is 30 degrees, right? Uh, if, it means this is 60 degree. If you know this is already 60 degree, this will be 120 degree. Now see, magnitude of each forces. F B A when you are calculating. F B A. K Q into 4 Q means q1 into q2 divided by l square when you are calculating fca this is again k q into 2q divided by l square now you get these values 
this is one force, this is second force, theta between them is 120 degree. Properly apply your parallelogram law to get the resultant force. Resultant force will be what? Under root FB A square plus FC A whole square plus 2 F A B into F C A cos 120 degrees. This you have to solve, obtain the value of the net. See, this question says that net capacitance of three identical capacitors is one microfarad. What will be their net capacitance if they are connected in parallel? Achha, when they are connected in series, their resultant is one. So in series means one by uh, C equivalent is equal to one by C plus one by C plus one by C. So uh, this becomes equal to in series combination, this is three by C. Right, so one by C equivalent, uh, this becomes three by C, right? Three by C, no, this becomes three Cs. So C, uh, one by C values of each is, no, or net is given as one. Net capacitance of three identical capacitors in series is, uh, one microfarad. What will be their net capacitance if they are connected in parallel? Okay, achha. see, if they are connected in parallel, look here, if they are connected in parallel, directly it will be 3 into C. Directly it would be 3 into C. Now see from here, 1 by C equivalent will be what? 1 by C plus 1 by C plus 1 by C, that is 3 by C. So C equivalent is C divided by three. So what is the value of C? C equivalent is given as one. That becomes one into three. That is three microfarad. So C in parallel is three into C and C is three. So three into three, this is nine microfarad. Find the ratio of energy in the two configurations if both are connected to the same source C. For the series one, you will use half C, series V square. For the parallel one, you will use half C, T, V square. These will be canceled, C, S. C in series, uh, this is C by 3. Or directly, you can take this as uh, C was given as 1, net equivalent, C equivalent was given as 1. No? C equivalent in series was 1. So C equivalent in series, this is 1 and C equivalent in parallel is 9. So ratio is 1 is to 9.
Arif, uh, meter bridge and potentiometers are not there in your syllabus. So please don't practice those questions. Okay.